What could prayer do for you? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. In his book, Living Life on Purpose, Greg Anderson shares the story of one man's journey to joy. His wife had left him and he was completely depressed. He had lost faith in himself, in other people, in God. He found no joy in living. One rainy morning, this man went to a small neighborhood restaurant for breakfast. Although several people were at the diner, no one was speaking to anyone else. Our miserable friend hunched over the counter, stirring his coffee with a spoon. In one of the small booths along the window was a young mother with a little girl. They had just been served their food when the little girl broke the sad silence by almost shouting, Mama, why don't we say our prayers here? The waitress who had just served their breakfast turned around and said, Sure, honey, we pray here. Will you say the prayer for us? And she turned and looked at the rest of the people in the restaurant and said, Bow your heads. Surprisingly, one by one, the heads went down. The little girl then bowed her head, folded her hands and said, God is great, God is good, and we thank Him for our food. Amen. That prayer changed the entire atmosphere. People began to talk with one another. The waitress said, we should do that every morning. All of a sudden, said our friend, my whole frame of mind started to improve. From that little girl's example, I started to thank God for all that I did have and stopped majoring in all that I didn't have. I started to choose happiness. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus went up the mountain to pray, and He prayed all night. As God, He did not need to pray, but as man, He modeled to us all how important prayer is, particularly before making critical decisions in life. He was about to choose his 12 apostles from among his many disciples, and they would set the world on fire for his glory. Disciples are, as we know, those who followed Jesus and learned from him. Apostles are those on a mission to accomplish Jesus' directives. Thus, apostles are disciples, but not all disciples are apostles. How about the 72 sent two by two? They also became apostles later on. But the first 12, the ones closest to him were chosen in today's passage. So is Paul an apostle or disciple? He did not follow and learn from Jesus and was therefore not a disciple. He even persecuted his disciples, didn't he? But he became an apostle by virtue of his spreading the gospel after Jesus appeared to him. Jesus taught us what to pray for when he gave us what we now know as the Lord's Prayer. Today, he shows us what happens when we pray deeply in silence, focused and just listening, just basking in God's presence as we commune with Him. And this is captured in the acronym P-R-A-Y, PRAY. First is P for peace. After a deep one-on-one with our Lord, we find that the confusion, worry, and fears that have enveloped us the whole time from some concern has evaporated. In its place is a sense of gratitude for the blessings that have come into our life. We experience tranquility amid the noise that surrounds us. We are saturated with the feeling that everything will be all right, that God is in control, that whatever happens, it will be for our good. And when there is that unwavering acceptance of what is to come, whether it is what we have prayed for or otherwise, we are at peace. R is for rapture or joy. We are wrapped in unexplainable joy when we have connected well with our Father in Heaven. That mountaintop experience we pine for is repeated where we are as our eyes are closed and our hearts open to receive His Holy Spirit. That awe of God's goodness, greatness, and love makes us go out to the world believing and knowing that happiness is not just real, but the power of joy is velcroed to our person. No storm can dampen our day No problem is too difficult, no task too burdensome. A is for ardor. Our missionary zeal is lit up to do more for our God 
when our hearts are set on fire as we pray. We are inspired and ready to pound the pavement, cross vast oceans and climb steep mountains to bring the good news to all. Impossible is nothing for us, to quote the famous slogan of Adidas, because all things are possible with God. Why is for yearning to love. We become vulnerable to the promptings of the Holy Spirit when He consumes us in prayer. We become humble and welcoming to everyone. Our biases, prejudices, condescending attitude, arrogance, and pride disappear. We become willing to forbear and forgive, to follow the commandment of love Jesus gave us. When our life is bathed in prayer, the commandment of love becomes real, reachable, and attainable. We know these. Peace, rapture, ardor, and yearning to love are all outcomes of a person whose life is prayer. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, protect my prayer life, and let your Holy Spirit overpower my tendency to take my prayers for granted. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.